So, Allah mentions that this is the month in which the Quran was revealed. The month in which the Quran was sent down. The month in which Allah took the Quran from the preserved tablet and sent it to Sama'a Dunya, the sky or the heaven of the dunya. This month, the month of Ramadan. So this month should represent for us a connection with the Quran. And as we've been saying, if this month, Ramadan, represents to you only those things which are connected with food, then you're wasting your time. You missed the point. The food is the tool, not the objective. 
when to stop eating. Not eating during the day. When to start eating again in the evening. If this is the essence of the month of Ramadan, we've missed it. We completely don't have a clue what this thing is all about. Yeah, and you have the Dina Amen who could be a little Musia and can a good be a little thing. I'm a couple of the Allah Kuntata Kum. Or you who believe we have prescribed fasting upon you like we have prescribed it to those before you so that you will become of those who have taqwa, so that you will become of the mutakum. That is the objective. La alakum taqtakum. Not so that you can know how to deal with food. Not that you can master your nutrition. No, so that you can achieve or gain taqwa. So keep that in mind, the Quran. We should all as individuals be strengthening our relationship with the book of Allah, the Quran. If all year, but especially this month, the Quran, especially if we're not doing this, we should do start from today. And it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter if you don't know the difference between an alif and a ya. Today is the day that you learn it. Move step, move closer to it. I don't know how to read Quran. I just know how to read English. So what? Start today. When you leave here, you're going to go someplace. When you when you're here and you have to go someplace, you don't just stand here and say, "Man, I need to get there," but. It's on the other side of town. Do you stand here and keep saying, wow, I need to get there, but it's on the other side of town. Oh man, it's like five miles away. Oh man, it's far. No, you don't stand there, you get the car and you move closer. It's the same thing. I'm so far, the Quran is revealed in Arabic language. It's in Arabic. I don't know any Arabic. You understand him all day keep saying I don't know Arabic or are you going to move closer to it so we should move closer and we should develop our relationship with the book of Allah this is Allah's speech to us Allah's divine guidance also about this month of Ramadan the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said من قام رمضان الإيمان واحتسانا غفر الله ما تقدم ما تقدم من ذنبه. Whoever stands in Ramadan, stand in Ramadan. What do you mean to stand in Ramadan? Stands to pray. Any prayer? No. He's talking about the prayer of Tarawih, the night prayer that's specific to the month of Ramadan. With sincere faith in hope of Allah's reward, Allah will forgive them of all of their previous sins. We should want that. We should want that. Forgiveness for everything we've done in the past. I'll give you something personal that happened to me. I don't have to get personal. I'll give you something personal that happened to me. And it's a very small thing. I got a, a piece of mail, something in the mail. Uh-oh, it's one of those speeding camera letters. Some camera caught me going past the speed limit. And they caught it, and they sent me the mail. I'm like, oh man, what's this ticket gonna be? So I'm opening the letter, and I, before I read it, my eyes are zooming for the dollar sign and the amount. Wait. It had dollar sign zero. You had the infraction, the date, the place, picture of the car, the license plate, everything was there. Read the paragraph. This is your first warning. No fee attached. If it happens again, <laughs> you know, right? That feeling. <sighs> yeah, they could be, but they forgave me. This is a ticket with some money. 
What about all the things we've done against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We would a lot of forgive us for that. If you can imagine how I felt about saving a few hundred dollars for some ticket, just imagine how we would feel if Allah forgives us for everything we've done. Think about that. Don't just think, oh, the color of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, blah, 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 blah. We should be like, what do you mean, blah, 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 blah. He said it, it means something. It's important. It's weighty. He would forgive us for what we've done. Are we like the Quraysh? We think when we die, it's all over with, and there's no reckoning, no anything? No. So we should be making Tarawee if possible. If you can't make it to the masjid, at least make a few, rak few rakats at home. Make a few cycles of prayer at home. And one of the reasons I mentioned Salatu Tarawee is because, alhamdulillah, our ustaz, our hafiz, he's been given some heart warming, heart softening, mal either lessons, some quick durus, some quick lectures before we begin the tarawih. And subhanallah, after the last couple of days, I said, you know what, I'm changing the khutbah. I'm talking about something that he mentioned. In, in the reminder. So if you're here, you know, you should try to come and benefit, not only from the Tarawih, not only from for the reconnection with the Quran, but for the reminder. So those of you who are here for Tarawih, you gonna have heard some of what I'm going to say uh, in the khutbah, and you already know what I've got, what, where I've taken it from. But while I said, do not belittle the Quran, do not belittle the words of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and reconnect with the Quran. This is the month to do it. Don't focus on the food. Don't focus on getting two, three, four, five plates go to go and all that kind of stuff. No. Save some room, save some energy so that you can refocus and worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and reconnect with his book, Al Quran, the biggest miracle of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the uncreated speech of Allah as a He was sent to his, his people and he called them, was calling them away from shirk, worshiping idols and all of the evil that they were doing. He was a prophet. He 
was chosen by Allah. He was sent to his people. I'm emphasizing that for a reason. Prophets don't choose themselves. They were chosen by Allah. Sent with a mission. He got frustrated with his people. And he left them. He left them. He warned them, listen, the punishment of Allah is going to come. Y'all better take heed. You better listen to me. We ain't listening to you. Why ain't nobody else come before with, with what you're saying? We've been doing this. Isn't that what people say when you try to give them some good advice? What's the excuse? We've been doing this. Why should we listen to you? He left. While he was gone, Allah turned the uh, skies red like it was going to rain down some fire on them or something. The people saw that and repented. They went to the mountains and like, y'all, Lord, please forgive us. Eunice didn't see this. He went and boarded a ship. He said, I'm done with these people. And when he got on the ship, and the people in Nineveh had made Tawba and Allah had accepted their forgiveness, he's on the ship. He left without permission. Allah sent him for a mission and he left before he was given permission to leave. It's like, I'm tired. He left. Meanwhile, he doesn't know that in his absence, they saw the threat literally hanging over their heads and they made tawbah. They called on Allah and Allah forgave them. Meanwhile, he left his post. He left his job without being properly relieved, and he's on the ship. And while he's on the ship, then Allah made the seas go crazy. And a lot of us are city folks. We don't really appreciate how scary boats are. Small boats or big boats when the water starts going crazy. We don't really appreciate that. Those of you who are going to Gambia with us in June, you're going to appreciate that. We're going on some boat rides. Allah commanded a huge whale to follow that ship. They said, listen, the seas are too rough. This is making it rough for us, so we have to unload some of this cargo. There's too much weight in there. We have to unload it. A lot of times we don't appreciate this because we spend our time in cars. It has shocks and springs and stabilizers. We can put heavy things in it. It may go down a little bit, but it's not. But if you've been on a boat, you know that thing has to be balanced. You can't just have a whole bunch of weight and then don't let the water get rough. So they started throwing overboard all of their luggage. All of their luggage. Still not good enough. They said, hey, we, we, we still a little bit overweight. We need to throw a person overboard. And so they drew lots. And the first time they drew lots, units. They said, okay, we know this guy's a righteous guy. We don't really want to throw him over. Let's draw lots again. The name came up, Eunice. A third time, Eunice. And so at this point, he recognized this is Allah doing this. He stood on the edge of the boat making do I. A wave came and took him. A wave came and took him. That big whale that was following the ship ate him and then went to the bottom of the sea. We can't really appreciate this. A lot of us, we, again, we're from the city. You know, we got small bodies of water. 
I remember a few years ago, somebody robbed a store and it was during the winter time. The Allegheny River was frozen. He rather ran across the river and the police were sitting there waiting for him. And the police were chasing the water free. This ain't the Allegheny River. It's not the Ohio, it's not the Monongahela. This is the sea and it's big enough to hold whales. That means it's deep. And so this whale went into the bottom of the sea. And Allah describes the three levels of darkness. It's nighttime. He's in the depth, depth of the ocean and he's inside of the whale. The stomach of the whale. He gained consciousness. He recognized, I'm not dead. This is Allah's doing this. I'm going through all this. I'm still alive. In the depth of the ocean in the middle of the night. I don't understand. We can appreciate how dark this is and how scary this is because we got all these lights around us. In the middle of nowhere, not on the middle of nowhere in land, like in a country somewhere. No, in the middle of nowhere in the ocean, at night, at the bottom of the ocean, inside of a whale. And you're still alive to experience it. Think about this. Because a lot of us, we go into darkness. There's darkness all around us. And we don't see no way out. And we, a lot of us are really hopeless. That's one of the diseases of the heart nowadays. A lot of us are hopeless. And we think there's no way out. But Allah still has us here. With his, but there's a sign in that. Allah has us here. He didn't destroy you. He, Allah could have destroyed Eunice at that moment for not carrying out his job. He's from amongst the elite of mankind. He's from amongst the NBI. And he turned and he didn't complete his mission. In the depths of the ocean, inside of the well, in the middle of the night, as our teacher mentioned, and it's mentioned in the Quran, Surah NBI, Surah number 21, verse number 86, he made this dua. He said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al -dhalimin. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni, inni, inni kuntu min al -dhalimin. There is no God except you. Glory be to you. Indeed, I have been one of the wrongdoers. You should remember this dua. Whenever you feel like there's no hope, there's no way to get out, you feel like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. There's no way out. I done messed up. There's no way to get back. La ilaha illa enter. Illa enter. Subhanaka inni kuntu min adhalimi. This is what he said inside of the stomach of the whale. And all of the creatures of the sea heard him saying that in the, in the belly of the whale. And he kept saying it and saying it and saying it over and over and over again. Sincerely from his heart. He knew it meant something. And Allah commanded the whale to take him to the uh, far off distant other land and spit him out. Allah gave him relief by means of this supplication. By means of this dua. And we have to remember this. In the Quran is a shifa, it's a cure and a rahmah, the book we need for the believers. We have to remember that. There's always a way out. You're breathing, you hear, you think this, oh man, I'm done, I'm finished. You're not finished, you're still breathing. You just got tools that you're not using. Allah gave it to you. You don't want to use it. It's right there, you have it. You see, you think it's just nothing. You think it's just words on the paper. But these words have weight. As our teacher was saying, don't sleep on dua. Don't sleep on afkar, supplication and remembrance of Allah. That's, there's a secret in that supplication. You, you dealing with enemies, you dealing with overpowering forces, you know, subhanAllah. That's why, you know, the scholars say, the one who doesn't have a weird, a litany, is a kir, is a monkey, right? Because it's subhanAllah. Every time I hear one of these, you know, these uh, 
uh, reminders about how powerful different supplications are. And then I look into some of the supplications that we have. It's in there. How many of us know different supplications, dua, awrad, and in there? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al It's there. This is part of the supplication. If you know the history in West Africa, when the Jamaat of Sheikh Uthman Dan Fodio, a hundred years after his passing, they were being invaded by the British, and they were being chased down. This was part of the awrad that they were reciting when they were making hijra to the east. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Seven times a day, part of the weird, after every salat. Seven times uh, after every salat, every day. That was part of the supplication. And Allah protected them, protected them from the British. This is a means of protection. This supplication. Don't sleep on it. Because people talking out like, man, listen. Depression is at an all-time high. People are committing suicide like never before. That's what everyone's saying. That's what everyone's saying. Like, there's people committing suicide like never before. Even some Muslims committing suicide. People feel hopeless like there's no hope. There is hope. You're still breathing. Allah can accept your repentance. Allah can get you out of the situation. If Allah can get a man who was a prophet in the middle of the night, in the bottom of the sea, in the stomach of a whale, out of that situation, he can get you out of your situation. When the whale spit him up, he was in the stomach of the whale, he was being digested. You know, our stomach has acids and stuff in it, very strong. If you have acid reflux, you know how that feels coming up. Ugh. That stuff messed up his skin when he came out. And then he's on an island and the sun is beating, burning on him. Allah caused the flower to grow and cover him. And that healed him. And then after some time, he got his strength back. He healed and he made it back to his people and found that they had already had accepted his message already after he was frustrated and he left them. Indeed, in their messages, in their stories, are signs, they are lessons for people who reflect. Stories of the prophets and messengers. This has, this has relevance for all of us. We get frustrated, we want to leave before it's time. In Allah, makes us go through something, and a lot of times we so heedless, we don't recognize why we're going through it. We think it's because we like to accuse everyone else. See, the reason why I'm going through this is because you did that to me, and you did this to me, and you did that to me. Not realizing that I did this to me. I did it to myself. A lot of times we're extremely heedless. Another lesson that we get from this story is that Allah forgave the people, and Allah forgave him. By use, by use, by sincere usage of this word. And he did it, he didn't just say one time, oh, I, I didn't lie, I lie, I lie, I lie, I lie, I lie, I my prayers, he is no good. No, he kept saying it over and over and over again. Then even after Allah forgave him and took him out of those three levels of darkness, he still had some healing to do. And it took some time. See, this ain't like, you know, something broke, you take the part out, put the new part in and fix it. No, real humans don't work like that. Healing takes time. It takes time, but you have to start it. And it begins with a sincere turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I advise all of you to remember this dua, memorize it, and make it part of your daily supplication. And remember this dua when you're going through something, when you feel like you can't deal with it. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minadolimi. There is no God except you. Glory be to you. Indeed, I have been one of the wrongdoers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect us and may not make us from amongst the wrongdoers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, uh, give, give us the tawfiq to give weight and meaning and significance to his words and not trivialize them. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reconnect us with the Quran.